It's no secret that different languages have different speech sounds. Spanish has its iconic R, Zulu's got its classic T and But what most people don't realize is that behind each of those individual speech sounds is something bigger, something almost magical. It's a system called phonology, which, get this, is quite literally an invisible system that your brain uses to filter raw speech sounds into patterns of meaningful language. Buckle up because in this video, we're diving into the impressiveness of speech sounds by covering what phonology is and why it matters. A, I, B, B, C, K, D, D, e. Welcome back to How Language Works. I'm Emily, your friendly neighborhood linguist. Now, whether or not you know it, you're relying on the rules and principles of phonology right now to decipher the sounds of my voice into meaningful speech. So what is phonology? Well, in the simplest of terms, phonology is the sound system of a language. When I'm teaching my linguistic students about phonology, their most common question is, how is phonology different from phonetics? Here's what I tell them. When you study the phonetics of a given language, you're studying the individual speech sounds that make up that language. When you study the phonology of a language, you're studying its overall sound system. That means how sounds relate to and interact with one another. In this way, linguists like to say that phonetics and phonology are like two sides of the same coin. They both deal with speech sounds, but they come at it from different sides. And lucky for you, we recently released a video about phonetics. So if you haven't watched it, I invite you to go check it out. Link is also in the description down below. And it's worth mentioning here that there are two main ways that the word phonology can be used. On one hand, it can be used to refer to the field of academic study. Phonology is a subfield of linguistics. It can also be used to refer to the sound system of a specific language, like every language has its own phonology. And you'll hear me use phonology in both ways throughout this video. When it comes to phonology, there's a lot to learn. But to understand the basics, there's really just two main things that you need to know about. One, phonemes, and two, phonological rules. These concepts can be a little bit abstract, so the best way that I've found to describe them is like this. Phonemes are like your brain's version of organizational bins for the various sound categories in your language. And phonological rules are like the instructions that help you decide for any given utterance which sound to pull from which bin. Okay, now that we've got the general bin metaphor down, let's talk about how these phonemes and phonological rules actually work. And we're gonna start with phonemes. So what exactly are they? Phonemes are units of sound that are meaningfully contrastive in a language. Here's an example. As an English speaker, you use and hear the T sound many times a day. The tiny turtles told the tiger to turn his dream into reality. But have you ever noticed that not every T you hear sounds the same? That's because the way we pronounce our individual speech sounds changes based on our context and environment. Sometimes those changes are small and sometimes they're more noticeable. For example, the way you pronounce the T sound in the word team is likely different from how you pronounce it in the word mountain. I mean, you can barely hear the T in mountain. But here's the thing, both of those words use English T's, even though they sound really different. So how does your brain know that both of those sounds represent the same underlying T. Well, as your brain learned the phonology of English, it created mental bins or categories to organize the sounds in a meaningful way. And as you probably guessed, those mental bins are called phonemes. Phonemes are those units of sound that are meaningfully contrastive in a language. For example, English speakers have one mental bin for the R sound, R, and another mental bin for the L sound, L. Now, that's because in English, R and L are two separate phonemes, but speakers of languages with different phonologies, like Korean or Japanese, have just one bin that contains both of those sounds. That's because in Japanese and Korean, the R and the L sound are part of just one shared underlying phoneme category. It's kind of like how the T in team and mountain are both T's, they belong to one phoneme category, but they sound really different. So that's why if you hear a Japanese or a Korean speaker learning English, they often use an R sound where an L sound should be, or an L sound where an R sound should be. Because to their ears, those are just two versions of the same underlying sound, the same phoneme. Now, if you're a native speaker of English, 
That might sound crazy to you. After all, the r and the l sound are completely different. Right? 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 But here's the thing. They only sound different to you because English phonology has taught your brain to bin those sounds as separate. The truth is when you break down the r and the l sounds phonetically or acoustically, they're actually quite similar. Okay, so now we know what phonemes are, but you might be wondering, why do we need them? I mean, can't we just hear each sound as it comes in and not worry about putting them into little mental bins? Well, think of it this way. Humans categorize things because it helps us make sense of the world and navigate it more efficiently. It's like how you organize your home, with the exception of that junk drawer that we all pretend we don't have. We typically store items that are similar together. Food goes in the fridge, clothes go in the dresser, cleaning products go in the closet. Simply put, having categories like phonemes help us quickly and efficiently decide what variations are important or worth noticing and which aren't. If we didn't use phoneme categories to organize incoming speech sounds, language would be really hard for us to process. Now, here's the real question. When you're speaking and you're about to use a word with a t sound, how do you know which of the various possible pronunciations of t to use? The answer is phonological rules. Phonological rules are basically pronunciation rules. Here are a couple of examples. The first one will be familiar to you. In English, when a t is located at the beginning of a word, as in the word team, Pronounce it like a hard t. When it comes in the middle of a word and after an n sound, as in the word mountain, pronounce it like n, this glottal sound, mountain. Now, every language has phonological rules, it's not just English. For example, in Korean, when you have a p sound followed by an n, you actually pronounce that p like an m. Long story short, pronunciation rules explain why we don't always pronounce our speech sounds the same way. These changes in how we pronounce individual speech sounds usually happen because the sounds interact with sounds in other words around it. And these rules usually make it easier for us to speak, make it easier for our mouths to blend one sound into the next. And if you want to learn more about sound blending, then check out the video we've linked for you in the description. Whew, okay, that was a lot. Let's do some takeaways. Your brain doesn't just hear raw sound input of individual sounds. It applies a filter based on phoneme categories and phonological rules. And without an understanding of a language's phonology, listening to someone else's speech would sound just like a bunch of acoustic mumbo jumbo. And now that you know the basics of phonology, you now understand why it's hard to learn the sound system of a new language. And you can apply this to your mindset when you're learning a new language or when you're giving empathy to someone else who's in the process of learning your language. Well, there you have it. We covered a lot in today's video. Here are your four main takeaways. One, phonology is the study of how speech sounds fit together in a language. Two, every language's sound system, or phonology, is organized based on phonemes and phonological rules. Phonemes are the organizational sound bins of your language's sound system, and phonological rules are the instructions for how those sounds fit together. And finally, without phonemes and phonological rules, our speech would be a lot harder to process. So, thanks, phonology. If you're new here and you'd like to make sure you are up to date on all of the awesome language content that we have for you, then come join the Mango Fam by subscribing to the channel. And if you like quizzes, have I got some fun for you because we created a free and fun interactive quiz about phonology, which we've linked for you in the description down below. It's pretty fun. Take it and see how you score. I believe in you. This is me again. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out our free phonology quiz, which you can access right here through the link on the screen. In our next video, we're breaking down how sentences work, which means we're talking about syntax. And if you want to be the first to know when that video goes live, then go ahead and ring that notification bell. In the meantime, you can catch up on all of our existing videos right here. Well, see you next time on How Language Works. Bye.